In this video, we will show you how to take the rest frame solution of the Dirac equation and boost it to a general frame of reference. To do so, we first need a rest frame solution of the Dirac equation, here in the wide representation and correctly normalized, as well as the transformation matrix for Lorentz transformations, S. As a first calculation, we will consider a boost in Z direction. This means we take omega 0, 3 to be the rapidity psi. Then the matrix S is given by the exponential of psi over 4 times the commutator of gamma 0 with gamma 3. Since we are using the chiral representation of the gamma matrices, this can be written in terms of Pauli matrices like this. Now, the bispinner U for a momentum in Z direction is given by S times the rest frame spinner. In order to calculate this, we expand the exponential in a Taylor series. Fortunately, the matrix sigma 3 minus sigma 3 becomes the identity matrix when we square it. This means for all orders, there will be ever only be two kinds of matrices, the identity and sigma 3 minus sigma 3. By expanding it to many orders, it is possible to recognize the series expansion for the hyperbolic sine and cosine functions. Therefore, this reduces to the hyperbolic cosine of psi over 2 times the identity minus the hyperbolic sine of psi over 2 times the sigma 3 minus sigma 3 matrix. And this gets multiplied onto the rest frame by spinner. We can write both terms inside one matrix and then distinguish between s equals 1 or 2. If we choose the sigma 3 basis for the phi s, then sigma 3 times phi 1 gives plus phi 1, whereas sigma 3 times phi 2 gives minus phi 2. Also, we can simplify this using an identity for the hyperbolic functions. Now, before we can continue, we have to do a small side calculation. We apply the boost in z direction to the 4 vector m000, which gives us p0, 0, 0, 0, pz. But we don't use gamma and beta to denote the Lorentz transformation. Instead, we use the rapidity psi. This means p0 is given by m times the hyperbolic cosine of psi, and pz is given by m times the hyperbolic sine of psi. Now we can replace the hyperbolic sine and cosine functions with p0 and pz. And in order to write the s equals 1 and s equals 2 case together again, we reintroduce sigma 3 here. Because then, depending on phi s, we will either get a plus or a minus. And this is the result. Now we can pretend that we are using a general momentum and write these square roots using sigma and sigma bar, which leads us to the final result. And the best thing is, since our original rest frame by spinner was already normalized and S is a unitary matrix, this solution is already normalized as well. In a very similar way, you can calculate the result for the antiparticle by spinner V, which looks like this. And that's pretty much it for this video. Thanks for watching.